Welcome to the 48 Rules of Retirement. Today, we focus on rule number 3 Practice Getaways. We begin with a quote from Samuel Beckett's writing, Waiting for Godot, my favorite play. I like Beckett for his comic genius although his work offers a bleak outlook on human existence, often coupled with black comedy or gallows humor. Perfect for us retired folks, don't you think? In, Waiting for Godot, the character named Vladimir says the line, that passed the time. And the other character, Estragon, replies, it would have passed in any case. To which Vladimir answers, yes, but not so rapidly. So, is retirement all about time management you might ask? And the next logical question is, now that I know what to expect, how do I actually get ready to retire? It's simple. You practice getaways. Isn't it strange that we associate the term getaway with a bank robbery or a holdup, a criminal correlation involving some misdeed? The Puritan ethic conditioned us to work long and hard with little recreational respite. Historically, this produced mixed results for both career and family life. I like comedian George Carlin's approach to work. Carlin says that most people work just hard enough not to get fired and that they get paid just enough money not to quit. I think that equates with the concept of suspended animation, but let's not go there. Remember that, I love Lucy, TV episode wherein Lucy tries to keep up with an industrial conveyor belt loaded with chocolates? She's supposed to package the chocolates as they approach, but she can't keep up with the steady flow. She resorts to eating some and stuffing others inside her uniform. I often felt the same way at work. In fact, sometimes there were chocolate stains on my shirt when I got home. Warning, this part gets preachy. If we could start over again with a fresh load of karma, one initiative that I would stress would be to schedule regular getaways, a counterbalance to modern business practice with its push in the opposite, soul-killing direction. We live in a society with unprecedented levels of distress and social diminishment. Divorce rates, mental health problems, jock itch, needless conflict and irritability have never been higher. We fool ourselves with silly abstractions such as double time and time and a half. Time is finite, not magically expanded or contracted to suit economic need. Busy parents try to swoop in, gather up the clan, magically announce a delightful quality time vacation and expect that everyone will enjoy an expensive, thrilling holiday. Good luck with that. Quality time implies the freedom to do absolutely nothing or just what you want to do. You can't instill quality time in concentrated capsules upon unwilling others like it's some euphoric opiate. Well, if you have access to drugs, I guess you can, but you get my drift. We really do need to get away. Ironically, in the process of getting away, how many of us will employ working holidays? Business needs to discover creative ways to help keep employees healthy. Time off, professional development, sabbaticals, flex time, pin the tail on the donkey office parties, pinata bashing, etc. Phew! That feels better. You can accomplish a similar catharsis by repeating after me. I'm pissed off. Damn it, and I'm not going to take it anymore. It works much better if you shout loudly. Now, try shouting out your kitchen window. 
you will be amazed. Neighbors will suddenly return borrowed items, your rake, wheelbarrow, fondue set, golf clubs, eggs, sugar. E.B. White's verse is instructive. Commuter one who spends his life in riding to and from his wife. A man who shaves and takes a train and then rides back to shave again. Let's finish with a retirement affirmation. Do not worry about inner conflict. Joan of Arc, Abraham, Moses, they heard strange voices too. Get ready for retirement rule number four soon to come.